Hello everyone. In this video, I scientifically test the heart rate accuracy of the Fitbit Sense. I'll test its overall accuracy during cardio workouts and weightlifting. In total, I tested the Fitbit Sense's heart rate accuracy during 94 training sessions. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now my channel is not so much about listing features, instead on my channel I try to test the accuracy of different measurements. I test the sense during 63 spinning workouts and 31 weightlifting workouts. In this video we will explore how accurate the heart rate tracking of the sense actually is and if this is better or worse during different workouts. A few months ago I first tested the heart rate accuracy of the Fitbit Sense and I found it to be much worse than some of the older and cheaper Fitbit models. The main problem was that it always had a strong delay in detecting increases in heart rate and it detected a too low heart rate during cardio workouts. Since then, many people have asked if the heart rate accuracy has improved after software updates that Fitbit has released. And that is what I will test in this video. To see if this has improved, over the last few months, I've continued testing the sense periodically. During that time, I've generally kept my Fitbit sense up to date with the latest firmware. Let's see if it's gotten any better. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare the sense to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the sense and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap for 63 spinning sessions and 31 weightlifting sessions. That way I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges. Let's start off with the accuracy during spinning. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy during spinning. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and along the vertical axis the value according to the sense. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the sense. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the sense is half that of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, there's quite some disagreement between the sense and the ECG chest strap. We see that in the higher heart rate range, the majority of the points are below the blue line, indicating that the sense detected a too low heart rate for the majority of the time. Here in the lower heart rate ranges, there appears to be better agreement, though even in the middle heart rate ranges, there is a cloud of points below the blue line. Let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see if these can explain what we're seeing. I'll look at some examples from different time frames so we can see if the algorithm improved over time with software updates. I'll start with some examples from October 2020. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Fitbit Sense. As you can see I took three short breaks in the spinning session where my heart rate would dip. For this spinning session we can already see a problem. At the lower heart rate ranges the sense is pretty accurate, but when we get to a higher heart rate the sense always detects a too low heart rate. Additionally we see a delay in it detecting an increase in heart rate for each of the segments. And this is basically what we see for every training session in October, like also in this example here, and also for this workout right here. We see a delay in the increase in heart rate and an inability of the Fitbit Sense to detect my actual maximum heart rate. For this final spinning session I wanted to show you from October, we can see that it's even worse. Now let's move to the results from December 2020. Were the results any different by then? Here we see the first example spinning session and we see similar problems to before, though maybe not as severely for this session. However, the next day the problems were much bigger again, as you can see right here. 
And for the third spinning session, it's somewhere in between. It's not as awful as the previous session, but it definitely still shows some problems. And this fourth spinning session is very similar to the one I just showed you in terms of the issues it has. So by December, the accuracy of the Fitbit Sense had not yet improved. Let's go forward a bit in time to April 2021 and see if any firmware updates improve the results. Here we see the first spinning session and again the maximum heart rate according to the Fitbit is always lower than that of the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And we basically see the same thing for all the coming spinning sessions like this one right here and also this one here. Arguably the difference has gotten a bit smaller between the ECG chest strap and the Fitbit Sense but the problem has definitely not been fully resolved. Finally let's look at the results for July 2021. Here we can see the results for the first spinning session. And again, this looks slightly better than the results we obtained in 2020, since the difference in maximum heart rate is not as big as before. However, the heart rate according to the Fitbit Sense is still lower than it should be. Looking at this second spinning session, we see something similar, where it's definitely an improvement compared to what we saw in 2020. And we see something similar here for this third spinning session, However, this fourth and final spinning session I wanted to show you is again a bit worse. The Fitbit Sense still shows some of the same issues it had originally. However, there are some indications that the accuracy is improving over time, with the newer results looking better than the older results, at least for my cardio workouts. So how does it perform during weightlifting? However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's get back to the test. Next, let's take a look at how the Sense's heart rate monitor performed during weightlifting. Now weightlifting is notoriously difficult for wrist-worn devices because during weightlifting I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist. This makes it extremely difficult for the watch to accurately detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. Let's have a look. Now this is an overview of the heart rate accuracy, similar to before but now for weightlifting. Of course the average heart rate is much lower during weightlifting than during cardio workouts. You can see that while there are a lot of points along the blue line, there are also a lot of points below the blue line, meaning the sense here detected a too low heart rate. Let's check if we can find out why this is in the individual training sessions. Again, I'll split the results into time frames to see if any of the software updates improve the results. In this case, I'll split it into three parts. October 2020, December 2020 and July 2021. Let's start with October 2020. Here we see the first weightlifting session from October. As you can see, there's a pretty poor agreement between the Polar H10 in blue and the Fibbit Sense in red. The Sense was not able to pick up on any of my increases in heart rate, and in the middle here it even shows a sudden dip in heart rate. We see the same for the second weightlifting workout. The overall pattern in my heart rate matches, but the peaks are completely missed. We also see the same for this third session right here, and also for this final session from October I wanted to show you right here. I don't want to waste your time, so really quickly, if we now look at December 2020, we see similar results to before also in this training session right here, and finally also in this training session from December. To close it off, let's look at the results for July 2021. Here we see the first session, and again the agreement is pretty bad. It's able to track the overall patterns in my heart rate, but it doesn't really pick up on any of the peaks. And we see the same thing for this second session right here, and also for this third session right here. So for weightlifting, there does not appear to be any significant improvement over time with regards to heart rate accuracy. So overall, for weightlifting, the results are pretty bad for the Fitbit Sense. However, this is true for almost all wrist-worn wearables I've tested so far. So how do these results compare to that of other Fitbits? To find out, let's compare these results to the results of the Fitbit Inspire 2, one of the cheapest Fitbits, and also to that of the recently released Fitbit Lux that I tested the other week. Let's start off with the spinning workout results, which are representative of cardio workouts. That is what it displayed right here. On the left we have the results of the Fitbit Sense, and on the right the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. I tested the Fitbit Inspire 2 for a total of 47 spinning sessions. As you can see, for the Inspire 2, we can see that most points are along the blue line, indicating that it was mostly correct. The Fitbit Sense, on the other hand, has many more points below the blue line indicating that it more often detected a too low heart rate. It's interesting to see that an $80 Fitbit like the Fitbit Inspire 2 greatly outperforms the $250 Fitbit Sense, which is the flagship smartwatch of Fitbit. Next, let's take a look at the results for the Fitbit Lux on the right here. 
Now I only tested the Lux for nine spinning sessions. However, you can clearly see that the Fitbit Lux has a higher percentage of points along the blue line and also clearly outperforms the Fitbit Sense. Next, let's compare how these watches perform during weightlifting workouts. That is what is displayed right here. On the left, we have the results for the Fitbit Sense and on the right, the results for the Fitbit Inspire 2. Interestingly, these two plots look very similar, indicating that they both struggled quite a lot keeping track of my heart rate during weightlifting. So for this type of workout, both perform about equally well or I would say equally poorly. And we see something similar for the Fitbit Lux on the right here. It has quite some difficulty tracking my heart rate correctly during weightlifting, similar to what we see for the Fitbit Sense. Based on these results, I would say there is some evidence that the accuracy of the heart rate monitor of the Fitbit Sense has improved a bit over time due to software updates. However, it still detects a too low heart rate during cardio workouts, just not as bad as before. Other Fitbits, both older and newer ones, clearly still outperform the Fitbit Sense during cardio workouts, which is surprising given the fact that the Fitbit Sense is Fitbit's flagship smartwatch. During weightlifting, the Sense did not perform very well. However, the same is true for all other Fitbits. So should you buy the Fitbit Sense? Well, for heart rate monitoring, it's still not my recommended Fitbit. It seems to be improving, but it still underperforms compared to other Fitbits. It does, however, have the most features and sensors out of the whole Fitbit lineup. So if you mostly care about those things, it might still be an option. Also, as I showed in a recent video, the Sense has good sleep tracking, similar to all other Fitbits. If you want good sleep tracking, but you do not care about smartwatch features, I'd recommend another Fitbit. For instance, the Fitbit Lux, Inspire 2 or Charge 4. If you want the best heart rate tracking from a wrist-worn device, then I'd recommend an Apple Watch. There are some limitations to the test that I did here. First of all, I just tested it on me and it might perform differently on others or doing different sports. Second, I tried to find a detailed change log with the firmware updates and the dates that these firmware updates were done, so I could specifically check if these dates had any differences in heart rate accuracy, but I couldn't find any. So in the end, I chose to look at dates from a few different months apart. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and also consider watching some of my other videos.